Hey everyone, back on my normal setup and I'm ready to introduce you to Animated Icons for Android Part 3. Enjoy! Now I know I've been saying this a lot, but I am really excited to talk about this next solution, and that's Rive. Now if you don't know what Rive is, Rive is an end-to-end -end way to add interactive graphics and animations into your application. They have the editor to create those animations, as well as the runtime library to render those animations on whatever platform you desire. Now, I've seen people use Rive with web apps, Flutter, iOS, but I haven't really seen anyone use it for Android. So let's change that. The game plan is as follows. We're going to take an icon, uh, namely this trash icon that we've been playing around with from Lord Icon, and we're gonna bring it into Rive. We're gonna bring it into the Rive editor, and we're gonna use the Rive editor to animate it and create something that we're hopefully happy with. Then we're gonna export that and bring that exported animation into our Android application. Uh, I'll go through what dependencies we need to actually use Rive with Android. And then lastly, we'll just hook up that animation to a button click and see what happens. So the first step is we download the icon that we want as an SVG. Here I am on Lord Icon. I'm just gonna click more and I can download this icon as an SVG right here. Uh, I've already done that, so let's go ahead and head into the Rive Editor. Now, when you navigate to the Rive Editor, you're going to be put on a screen where you might not have anything already. I already have a couple of projects here, uh, so I'm just going to create a new file. I'm going to click a blank artboard, and I'm just going to uh, lock the size, and then I'm going to change it to 24 by 24. All right, so that's like the canvas or the viewport size for a standard icon. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pull in that icon asset into Rive and I'm gonna put it onto the artboard. You can see it's showing up. I'm just gonna reposition it. Now we have our icon ready to animate. While we're here, let's just take a quick tour of the Rive editor. Uh, now, I'm no expert, but I was able to poke and prod enough to kind of figure out what I'm doing. Uh, so let me give you my take. On the left here, we have the SVG that we just imported. And so you can kind of see all the components that make up the SVG, which is really nice because that gives us a lot of options to animate the specific portions. And on the right, you can kind of see the properties of any particular portion of the SVG that we select. Um, so I can play around with like scale, uh, I can play around with X and Y translation. But the first thing I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna take the selection color of the group and I'm gonna turn it to white. Now that's the design tab, but I think the more interesting things will be in the animate tab. So let's go ahead and go over there. Now when you click on that, you'll notice that you have some things already filled in for you. You have the state machine and you have this timeline. We're gonna go ahead and delete the state machine for now, uh, but we'll come back to using a state machine later. And well, let's just go ahead and look at this timeline. Now, if you've used any design software before, this should probably look a little bit familiar to you, but it's just essentially a timeline that runs for the duration of the animation. And we'll be able to set up keyframes to make some cool animation. Let's play around with the animation tool in Rive just to get a feel for it. And then I'm gonna jump to an animation that I've already created and we'll use that in the application. Let's select the lid and let's say I wanna animate uh, its height over time. So I'm going to um, start the scrubber at the zero second mark and then I'm gonna set a keyframe at its Y position because I want that's the thing that I'm gonna be updating. And then I'll go all the way to 30 and say at this time, make it negative 10. Cool. And then maybe at 45, it's gonna go back down to eight. So if we like scrub through, you can kind of see that the animation's already playing and um, Right now, it's all just linearly interpolating the values to this over that time frame, but we can change the interpolation to be cubic instead of linear. And so like I can have it be like shoot into it and then slowly reach that height. And then at this keyframe, 
can have it pick up a bit and then overshoot. Ooh. So let's see what that looks like. Woo, that's pretty good. So then let's just see what the export process looks like and let's bring Arrive animation into our Android app. So this is an animation that I built after playing around with the tool a little bit and watching some tutorials. So if I play it, you can see that it's pretty playful and it really didn't take me that long to build this. So I think it's a testament to Rive as a tool and how easy it is to, to use and make something even as a complete beginner. Now, before we export this, I just wanna bring your attention to this animations panel and talk through it a bit. You can see that there's a couple things here. There's this click animation. There's also this idle uh, animation timeline. And then there's this main state machine. The cool part about Rive is that you can set up state machines uh, for various animations and how they transition from one animation to another. And so right here is a simple state machine uh, that will help drive the animation state for this animation. And so I have this idle animation and that's just the initial positions for the keyframes. Um, that just makes it easy to navigate uh, transition back to this idle state. We'll say, take a look at that in a moment. But if I, uh, if I also show this input window, I can see that I can add different types of inputs. I can add like a trigger. Uh, and what I added was a Boolean and I called it click because that's how I'm gonna be activating the animation. Uh, and so let's see how that works. The way that you add things to the state machine is you just kind of just like drag it in and it becomes a block and then you can connect them. Uh, and so if I play, uh, it looks like I played the click animation. Oh, and the reason it's doing that is because I have a loop. I'm gonna set it back to one shot. Um, so it clicks. If I unclick it, it goes back to idle. Um, and then if I click it again, it goes to click, unclick, it goes to idle. So pretty cool. And so we can leverage this state machine when we export it uh, using the Rive library and we can uh, feed this animation, that input value, and then it'll transition into the animation for us. So let's go ahead and export this. In order to do that, I'm gonna click this button here at the top and I'm gonna to go to download for newest runtime, click that. Uh, it'll get spit out this .riv file. I'll just save that to my desktop for now. And then I'm gonna nav navigate over to Android Studio. Um, and I'm going to pull that over into the res raw directory. So let me just take this, drag this over, refactor, and now it's in the proper directory. With all that in place, we're almost ready to start arriving. There's only a few things left to do head over to the build.gradle, make sure we add the Rive Android library right here uh, and do a quick Gradle sync. And then we head over to the main application and make sure we add this Rive.init and pass it the application context. And now we're all set. So let's head over back to the example, the age old example where I have a red button that I wanna click and animate an icon. Now, in order to set up the Rive animation here, uh, I'm actually gonna use something called Rive Animation View. Now, Rive unfortunately does not have uh, Compose extensions yet, but it does have this traditional Android view. But because Compose uh, has the bridge APIs, we can still use it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up an Android view. I'm gonna pass it that factory. Uh, and this factory is going to be given a context. So I can just say Rive Animation View it. I'm going to call that apply. Now in the supply block, uh, this is where I'm going to set the Rive resource. So I'm going to call r.raw.trashcan. And with all that in place, I should be able to render something. Now, unfortunately, this broke our preview. Arrive does break our compose previews, but we have a physical device. Let's just run this on our device really quickly. Once it launches, I'm just gonna close this and open up running devices. And look at that. We have a button here. It is not quite working just yet because there's no animation playing, but the, an the icon is rendering. So that's a good start. The icon is a little big. So let's go ahead and fix that really quickly. 
Let's just add a modifier. Oops. Modifier, set it to 24 DP. And if we rerun, it is now the right size. Perfect. We can even zoom in a little bit to get a better look. Uh, so now everything's in place. We just need to set the animation. And uh, the way that we're going to do that is we're going to leverage the state machine. Now, if you remember, we actually set up the state machine already uh, in Rive. And so let's just emulate that in our app. I'm going to create this clicked uh, mutable state. So I'm going to call it, actually, I'll make it a var clicked. Let's do by remember mutable state of false. I'm also just going to create a coroutine scope because I'm going to be using coroutines. So um, in order to actually read the state, uh, I'm going to set up an update block, which will take in the view and will actually leverage that state that we just created. So I'm going to call state. Now I'm going to reference the state machine that I created. Um, I'm going to reference the input type, which is click. And I'm going to set the value. And the value is going to be clicked. To update that value, I am just going to use this clickable modifier as always. I'm going to open up a scope and launch a coroutine. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set clicked equals true. Set a little delay. And then say clicked equals false. Now it's a little awkward because I'm essentially just toggling something on and then off with a little bit of a delay to uh, kind of emulate this click that I want to happen so that the state can actually change and we can update that state and then update it again. Um, there's probably a better way to do this, but this is what I'm going with for now. Uh, so now if I rerun this, we now have a button that when we click, plays a little animation. And that is that. Let's go over here and run this little application that I built just to showcase what we've accomplished here today. We have now gone through three different techniques to support animated icons in your Compose app. And they all work fairly well. And they all can work for you, depending on your needs. So you might be thinking, which technique do I use? Well, that depends on what you have and what you're trying to accomplish. If you have animated icons via After Effects, Lottie Files, or Lord Icon, just use Lottie. It's simple and it works very well with Compose. If you want to take a stab at animating those icons yourself, convert those icons into vector painters and then just use your favorite Compose animation APIs. Or if you're feeling fancy, just use Rive and do it all. There's probably other techniques that work well for supporting animated icons in your Compose app that I didn't cover in this video. If you have a technique that works for you, feel free to add a comment. I'd love to know what you guys are using in your own apps. That's it for me. If you liked the video, feel free to subscribe, but honestly, I'm just happy you made it this far. I hope you learned something today. Until next video, peace. Code for me? No. Nope.